is the Bill Squire Show. All right, goons, listen here. We're in a very different place, all right? We are in the iHeartRadio studio, and we're going to do a little collaborative stuff with a person that we love very much because we have a very important guest with us. We had to travel through the snow to get here. I'm going to send it off to the big man that is in the studio. That's his home. Hey, I'm Bill Squire. Welcome to the Bill Bill Squire Boogered Up Show, whatever we're going to call yes, this. Yes, sir. It's, uh, it's everything, but we are extremely excited because we have a special guest here today. Che Dorena. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Round of applause yeah, for Che. How are we Nestorio. doing, guys? We're doing good. We're doing good. Yes. First things yeah. first, I got to ask you, how many people do you think you have given blue balls as they are starting their process? Oh, dude, I get that quite a bit. People are like, yeah, I, I start, like, you're into the video. You're seeing some, like, <laughs> some good hoed up chick, and then I pop my head in. I like that. I like that that's something people people get, like, PTSD from it almost. Yeah. yeah They're yeah. like, yeah. Because yeah. I go... Uh, I'll be watching a video. I'll be like, "Where's Che?" Yeah, like, yep. uh, well, you know, I, I'm not watching this just to get a boner. I'm watching this to get a boner and a joke. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want, I want, so sometimes I you're you're looking at a hot chick and then you're you're suspicious that I'm gonna pop up. I'm yeah. not even there. I'm just yeah. in the back of your head. It's like it's like that scene in the Batman when they see the signal in the sky <laughs> and they all start looking at the shadows. They're like, "Is he here? Yeah. Is he here?" Yeah. I don't even need to be there, but you're scared. That's yeah, the important part. That. Nobody checks where the profile, like where the video is actually coming from, right away. As soon yeah. as you see yeah, that you're you like oh see, money I got like, it yeah. yeah a bad little mommy and my feed like, my feed okay. is responding to me and then what's up idiots I'm like god yeah. honestly it's a great way to edge yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're into edging okay how yeah. how old are you guys 26 26 25 26, 25 28 so you guys are a little younger okay I'm 42 42 so, yeah. bill you're 42 so i'm yeah. 31 no way and i'm the yeah, i'm 31 no, no, no. yeah i am i'm 31 <laughs> you see your driver's license. dude i can <laughs> Social security dude i can worry about my driver's <laughs> license dude um but okay gooning gooning so mm. what is i thought gooning was just edging there's my driver's license there's the driver's <laughs> license <laughs> My Canadian driver's license. Mid, mid fro. He mid fro. Yeah, that's mid fro. Toronto. Yeah, yeah. He confirms. Yeah. Um, so, gooning. <laughs> We're familiar with gooning? Yes. So, I thought, is gooning just edging? Is that what it is? Or is it a diff? It's like edging for a, a super long period of time? Yeah. I think gooning is edging, but someone else is in control of the edge. Yes. Wait, whoa. I think that's what it is. Where, like, you are getting close and getting close, but there's a lady that says, you can't cut like a mistress almost. That's like oh, you can't yeah. come yet. That's yeah. what gooning is. I'm gooning. pretty sure that's what Bro, gooning I've been is. I gooned and not even realized the thing. <laughs> oh, we all so have. Yeah. It's yeah. so good because yeah. we came up with the goon thing because of uh because of the one hockey movie, the goon. Yeah, and yeah. So because we love that movie and the shit with that. Good and Canadian when we started movie. doing it, yeah. So we started doing it, and then we found out that somebody reached out and was like, "Are you guys?" Because we talk sexual stuff as well. It's like, "Are you guys like?" doing gooning are you guys like what is the goon stuff for we're like what are you talking about yeah we're like, oh shit i've been seeing gooning everywhere and just the like the terminology gooning is funny it's like yeah. funny phonetically so yeah. i'm on it board doesn't already sound sexual it doesn't sound sexual at all it's but like ooh. yeah like, it, it's that ooey feeling. but i like that it's just this dumb thing that like a bunch of dudes are getting on board and it's like an evolution of edging i've been edging my whole life I've been fucking about that, yeah. dude. When I'm wanking it, <laughs> I'm always. Oh yeah, got to. What's the longest you've edged? Oof. I've done some, dude. There's this one time. I think the craziest nut I had from like not nutting was I. There was I was in Germany. I went on a date with this girl. She came back to my place and we're like hooking up. And she's like, I don't want like we can kind of do like everything around sex, but I don't have sex with you until we go out for dinner. And I was like, okay, cool. So we were just like messing around all night, and then we went to sleep. And then in the morning, same thing, started messing around again. And so. I want to say like hours. Like yeah. this oh, is wow. we're we're saying like this like is a whole night. this is a whole and then into and the morning? next morning and then we got into the shower together and I was like I I was, I was I told her I was like I need to make myself come or my balls are gonna be like horrible. <laughs> yeah, you didn't even sleep that yeah, last night. You were staring at the ceiling day, the whole yeah. time. And when I nutted, I swear to God, the sound of the nut it like hit the glass uh. like like <laughs> sliding door of the shower. <laughs> like it oh dude, exactly. It <laughs> sounds like <laughs> like <laughs> like a bug hit the windshield. Yes, like, like, and not like a a little like a bumblebee yeah yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. While you're driving. yeah. <laughs> dude it was it fucking it it was like it had a tone to it and i think that was like one of the craziest nuts i've ever had that's, but that's that's that, one of those things too like with when you take that time and like and build it up it's it's so nice and then going back to like the gooning and the evolution of the word i think it also has origins in simp community oh really where, like because it's almost like taking it back. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm a simp for a girl, but 
I'm gonna nut <laughs> eventually. I don't know. I don't think there's any official is it like, guidelines on that, but I that's what my I think. Is it like you're her goon? Like you're her like oh, that, shit's hard. Yeah. that shit's hard. hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is just that, walking around like I'm her goon. You know, I have, yeah. some people know what that is, and the people I'm that do are goons, like you probably. <laughs> she probably got a lot is of goons. <laughs> okay, because I've been trying to get to the bottom of gooning for a while, and I was trying to di- find out the dif- differentiating factor. I thought like someone t- described to me, it was like a state of mind, <laughs> like, <laughs> like a spiritual. Like yeah. like gooning is is not the act of edging, but your mindset when you are edging. That was they were like okay. that is what gooning is, and I was like I'm like what is this? That's and, like meditative masturbation. Ex- like, like, like that yeah, kind of like, thing. It's not just a and and I get that because a lot of times like mindset has a lot to do where it's like you start watching a video but then your yeah. mind takes over and you're mm-hmm. like I'm not even paying attention to what's happening here it's I've like taken this just... on my own like yeah. D&D adventure in my yeah. brain where I'm trying to to fantasize about someone else or or this situation with me in it it's it's a whole uh like Ex- exercise of brain power. Yeah, yeah dude. I've caught myself lost in my imagination, just blankly staring at the screen, like, you know, and like not even realizing it. Yeah, and the, just listening like, to the like, sounds. Like you didn't even <laughs> yeah. click. Yeah. You didn't even oh, click bro. skip ad yet. Like, yeah, I'm like oh, <laughs> sometimes the skip. ad does the job though. Some there ads are good. Some ads. There was one ad that they were killing up, and I was so mad for those five seconds because the girl was so obnoxious when she was moaning. I'm like, this is fake. I know you. You don't mean this. This yeah. doesn't feel that good. For five seconds, I've lost my buzz on this. Oh, one. Yeah, it would ruin. It would ruin the experience. I know, right? Damn. I see them ads too, and it's like local milfs don't have to pay no credit card information i'm like how true is this it's not true at all dude it's 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 a hundred percent true just click it just click it follow (laughs) follow the yellow brick road you got it okay bet i don't know the official numbers but i've heard that the fucking cpm on uh porn ads is like insanely low like if you want to run a porn ad it's so fucking low because no one clicks there's like no click through rate. you're not there for it yeah nobody cares i wonder if we can get an ad on the porn you might be able to <laughs> might be able it. to get something on there. You, like I'm not against it. I think it's not a bad idea. You'd probably get more clicks just because people would be like, "What the hell?" What like, the it's fuck just is different. this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like corn that time the day that it's corn. Yeah. yeah. I love the idea of like you're about to jerk off, and I'm like, "Hey, come see me, hilarities." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you might get like with what you're known for. You might get a huge return on that. Yeah. Like, better than like paying for. Facebook ads on like right. an event page. Well, like I, I think it's funny. It's a. Fu- I'm actually. Yeah, I probably should do this. I should do it's this. It's just yeah. five he seconds. <laughs> yeah. It's five seconds where he says, "Follow me, you fucking idiots," and Dude. everybody goes, "What is happening right now?" Well, I'm in Winnipeg this weekend or this upcoming weekend, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be you um, reach out to the hub. And I'm see gonna what be you can like, yeah, done. hub. I think we're gonna go. I don't know if I want to go hub. I'll go like X videos, XN, XX. Like I I'll go you're some an of X the, guy. I'm yeah. an X videos guy. I love X videos. Uh, I'm off. I'm trying to do no porn for January. I'm doing like dry January in two senses. No, no porn, no booze. Yeah, trying to keep it well, clean on I there. Well, I have one thing. I heard that you're a Zen guy. I, dude, I literally, <laughs> as you said that, it sparked my brain, and I was like, there I gotta put go. a Zen in. <laughs> Bill, yeah. Bill's about to throw up and die right now because we had him I, want to do a Zen on the pod, and it did the worst number to oh, him. Oh, dude. Possible. Well, yeah, because you, you did you give him a yours? six? I have sixes. Yeah. You're crazy. You can't give a fresh man a six, <laughs> yeah. dude. I'm like, I'm a three-er. Yeah. I, got, oh, yeah. I got hiccups for like 10 minutes immediately. It was brutal. Dude, no, I'm a three guy. I was fucking, uh, I don't know if I can say who this was, but I was, uh, was on the road with someone, and there was like this kind of after-party thing, and someone was hanging out with us. And we were all like doing zins and shit like that. And this guy's like, I've never done it before. And we give him one and he's drinking water. And then he goes, I swallowed it. And we're oh, like, what? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, got what? the ultimate right. I, I don't know who this is, but that sounds like a Burt Kreischer story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm not saying that's who it was, but I could just be, oh, I swallowed it. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't Burt Kreischer. It wasn't Burt Kreischer. Um, no, it was just this person who like, so was funny. hanging out with the group. And we, he got real quiet, and I, you could tell he was, like, in the eye of the storm at times. And then he kind of got to the <laughs> other end. He didn't puke or anything, which I was impressed about. He and, but he, he was like, yo, it was bad for a minute. Because I'm like, yeah, because... I, the first time I did Zen was a six. Yeah. And I put it in and I left it in for maybe a minute. 
and then I took it out and was like, okay, like I'm I'm as high as I need to be off of this fucking. Well, no, what you, what got you into Zins? Is it were you a chewer beforehand, or were you no, smoker, or no? So, you're a trendy bitch. Uh, yeah, part <laughs> part of it is there's a there's a couple elements to it. Um, so I, uh, I, I did not like to, I do not like tobacco at all. I, I puked one time dipping. Uh, when I was a kid, I was 10 years old. Me and my family went to Cuba and my parents let me smoke a Cuban cigar oh, on this nice. resort Ooh. and I fucking got so sick. Um, so I've always, I've never had a good relationship with tobacco, but, um, I started listening to the Huberman pod. And Huberman's all about like optimizing, blah blah blah. And he's uh. talking about he has all these scientist friends who like chew nicotine gum because nicotine is actually really good for focus. Mm -hmm. I've even heard that people who have like schizophrenia, some of the reasons why they like to smoke is because like quiets the voices in their mm. head. Um, and then fucking yeah, Bert Kreischer got me onto Zins. He Hell loves yeah. Zins, so he was like, I was I went on the road with him. And he was like, oh, yo, you got to try these. And I was like, all right. And I tried it. And I was like, oh, this is fucking great. Yep. And I'm trying to cut back on the booze. I'm cutting back on, like, a lot of the extracurricular stuff. Like, never been a big weed guy. Uh, like, it's always kind of been in the mix, but not a huge amount. But I like things that hone me in more. I'm always trying to be like, how do I write better? How do I work out better? How do I fucking, as, as much as I am a degen, I try to keep the body healthy and then just like be degenerate on the sexual stuff. Yeah, like keep I the like temple that. well, good. Well, that's a lot of fun. That's, like, yeah, balance. that's a perfect. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's hard. Like the the uh, food is a bad one for me too. Oh, like I fucking, too, I'm trying bro. to lose weight right now. I'm down like seven, which is great. Nice. But I want to get back down to like 180. But food is a big vice for me. I love to just fucking like. Especially uh, on the road though. Oh, Because dude. on the road, it's so hard to keep a main, maintain a healthy routine. And then yeah. also. When you're going through cities, people will be like, "Get a Polish boy," and there's yeah. that's not part of the diet. Like that's no. like that's French fries on a sandwich, Ooh, and you're gonna what? yeah yeah. It's a, Ooh, I want that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, like when you were touring with uh, Bert, what uh, which tour were you doing? The arenas, or were you doing like the the arenas? Yeah, yeah. I was just on the road with him not that long ago. So yeah. we did a bunch of stuff in Virginia, North Carolina. I think there was another state we were in. Um, and it was all tour bus stuff. It was very cool. Yeah. Very, very, very cool experience. And he's fucking awesome, man. He's yeah, I've known Bert for 20 years or so. And, cool. like, when he com comes through, like, he was at the end of uh, a leg of his tour, and he was sick, and, like, he was just powering through. But, like, I'm buddies with, you know, Dave and uh, Shane and, and uh, yeah. uh, Mav, a few of the other guys that, that opened for him. And just, like, seeing them in a venue like that is, is really cool because you're like, that's my, like, my guy, and he's opening for Bert, and Bert's yeah. just like this. The, the blow up he's had has been monumental. Oh, dude, what's and, that like? The walking out in front of like fifteen thousand people. Oh, dude, like it's uh, it's pretty wild. It's a definitely a, a completely different experience to do stand up. And I, I opened each show that we went on, and so my mindset was just like they're here for Bert. My yeah. my yeah. job isn't to be like a fucking I'm gonna steal the show. My job right. is to is to do a little bit of a fucking layup to or like an alley oop to yeah. the next guy so right. that it, the show keeps going really well. So just go out and do a great job. Every show I went out and just like acknowledged Bert. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I think I was uh opening the shows with being like, I wanna do my uh, my goal on the tour is to do mushrooms with Bert. Yeah. And then I would go into my mushrooms bit. Yeah. yeah. And then so like That's very smart. That's yeah, very smart. I, yeah. I am acknowledging, yo, we're all here for fucking Bert. Yeah. I get yeah. the ride. Here I'm gonna hit you guys with some solid stuff. And it was great. Every yeah. show was great. I was really expecting not to like un having not faith in my own comedic ability, but I've seen other comics open for people in like huge venues like you go see burr you go see bert or whoever yeah the openers usually struggle yeah because like people are filing in like mm -hmm. the people are there to see the one person right. uh and the one thing that bert has done with that audience in uh you know having the podcast with tom and having his own podcast they're pretty comedy literate yes so they understand like get there on time the openers are part of the show yeah they are there for a reason it's because Bert respects them and wants them on the show and wants you to know who these guys are yeah and I think a large majority of that audience understands that and you see people out there enjoying the openers more than because I've seen you know other guys in arenas and it is that we were talking about where they're having a tough time and they're having uh to kind of work for it 
because everybody's just there to see Bill Burr, or John Mulaney, or whoever. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So we had a we had a conversation uh-huh. with AJ Wilkerson on yep. the pod, and he was explaining the fifteen thousand. Did you have uh, shows prior that were that big or close <laughs> to that big? <laughs> no, no, no dude. He said his his room, the top that he had was four hundred, and then the first night I believe was seven thousand, and yeah. then the next night was like twelve thousand, something yeah. like that. So it was like you went from just a small little hole with like yeah. He said it was easier to see, like because with the crowd you can't see people's faces that well. So yeah. It's like you're just seeing an arena of all one face. Yeah. How did that impact you when you went from your shows to going on tour and doing this every day? I like the first show was definitely the most nerve wracking. And then after that, you kind of got your bearings with it. You got like, okay, this is, I knew what jokes I would do. And because I was first, I was like, what am I going to open with? I don't want to go too dirty. I don't know what his audience responds to. Like I, I, I know Bert's comedy well enough, but I think the stuff I talk about is like I go like not that he doesn't go raunchy, but I'm like a lot of sex, a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Um, because that's the that's my sense of humor in the audience. It'd be I'm hilarious to go to one of your shows and you yeah. don't do any of that shit. Dude, why? We, yeah. we see you on social all the time doing that. And we're like, where's the penis jokes, bro? I, I've done shows where uh people come up to me after and like I'll do you if I do my full hour front to back. Yeah. The first twenty is probably like drugs, family, like relationship stuff. And then the back 40 is more like sex and like fetishes and stuff like that. Nice. Uh, and I've had people be like, man, I wanted more. I wanted more like sex raunchy yeah. shit. And I was like, oh. I talked about eating ass for seven minutes. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you so want you more? Want to and like, but that's why you get to come back and see me next time. I'll yeah. have more. Like, it's yeah. a, there's always going to be an opportunity to. To expound on that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the arenas were – it was just, like, just go out, just do a really good job, and then just keep the ball rolling. Uh, and it was fun as fuck. Like, the hang is fun. The tour bus thing is fun. Everything around it, the food's great. Like, the fucking joke around shooting the shit. And then seeing Bert's whole, like, uh, well, philosophy for comedy was great. It opened up my my ideas of how to structure things. Like, it was what only – Can a- you expound on that a little bit? Just because that sounds – yeah, like as a he, comic, that sounds interesting. He talked about just um, like structuring a special. Like yeah. uh, he talked about. Um, he's he's talked about that before, where he took he he took his closer and put it in the middle. Yeah, because that's people it. watch for like thirty minutes, and so he wanted to get, make sure that joke was in there. Yeah, and that's that's uh, really smart. Because, and then he had like way higher retention on yeah. all of his. But like he, the way he crafts comedy, and like he'll do he'll do an hour, hour ten, hour twenty, and then go into the machine, yeah. which is mm-hmm. another twenty minute yeah. part. And then when he does the machine, he'll have like all these offshoots where he'll go on like these tangents where he's doing bits within the machine. Mm-hmm. I think to keep it fresh for the audience, but also yeah. to keep it fresh for himself. Yeah, he's and got it, to. Oh, dude, and like his and how he works on stuff and improves stuff throughout the the show uh, throughout the run. And while you're watching him, you're not only being like, oh, he's killing with the bits, but his storytelling is so captivating that you're like, what happened next? Yeah, What's right. the next part of the yeah. story? Like, it, yeah, it's really – he's fucking really talented, man. I went and just saw him uh, last time – actually, last two times he's been in Cleveland, and the story of him with his dad going through um, – watching it before the special – but watch it where, where he was talking about going through the little maze in the house and everything and farting yeah. in front of his dad mm-hmm. yeah. was one of the funniest jokes I think I've heard in a long time. Yeah. It killed me. Yeah, I was dude. crying laughing in the crowd. Yeah, he's, he is. He's fucking great, dude. I right. got to ask you a question, though, because you might be the only other person I've ever met that does this, and we're going, I'm going back to sex, of course. Yes. When you look up on porn, yeah, I was listening to a couple podcasts that you were on, and in one of them you mentioned that when you're on X videos, you will click that and add it to a new tab. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought yeah. I was the only one oh, that dude. actually did that because everybody else is just they're looking through the one video, they get their couple yeah, minutes like in. Yeah, tabs open. I got oh. my phone right now, and I tell you, I've oh, got. God, oh, you got porn them. tabs ready to go? Oh, I have porn. Yeah, Pornhub oh. is open on my oh, phone yeah. right now. Oh. I, I have <sighs> fifty tabs open, and I probably half of them. Are Porn. That's wild. You I just leave them up there. Yeah, yeah. just keep it there. You know, no, if I don't want to go access. scrolling, yeah. I have one that I knew did the job beforehand, yeah. and I just re- revisit it again. See, I, I always fucking burn the field afterwards. I go like, <laughs> everything must die. Everything <laughs> must die. Yeah, that's how I, I am. Yeah, yeah. I need you to get, restart. Exactly. I got to get back to being a human being. Um, I don't want that temptation just lingering there because I did. I went to go look at Pornhub. I'm trying not to watch porn for this month, and I was looking at Pornhub to work on a joke about Pornhub. And I, you just catch yourself just fucking with the thumb, <laughs> clicking the thumbnail, yeah, yeah, seeing yeah. it run, and you're like, ah. and I'm like, no, I, I, that is definitely a vice for me that I don't like. Like, I don't keep snacks in the house. I don't keep booze in the house. I can't keep porn tabs open because I don't want that easy access to those those vices. The only thing that I've ever kept that I closed was the 
ones where I'm like not myself, and I'm like, right. I don't know why I did it that night. Yeah. I, I clicked on a wild video. <laughs> I got to delete this, so I didn't. That was a weird time. The ones you're ashamed of. That's how it is every time. That's yeah. why. I, that's yeah, how that's I, as I soon got as I'm done. Yeah, yeah, it's like. It just who, who was that? You just burn it, dude. <laughs> who, was that? Well, who have I become? I've been big on Reddit porn. I use Reddit, so good. dude. Reddit's kind of like my the Kindling. Like I'll go to Reddit first That's and just pretty. yeah, it gets what's it your, going. What's your favorite subreddit? Ooh, squirting is great. There's squirting one is. video on squirting that is one of the most wild oh, fucking videos. Squirting it's is crazy, dude. It's this girl. <laughs> she has like a bunch of different toys in her pussy. Like all like she has like three or four different toys in her pussy, and she squirts like crazy. And then these toys like kind of fly out of her pussy, and then she puts her like her middle finger in her asshole and sort of like hooks it open. <laughs> And then a, a dildo shoots out of her ass. Holy <laughs> yeah. shit. And you're like, what the <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a marvel just to watch, and then her pussy it's like hard. convulses, like yeah. it like fucking it looks like something's gonna birth birth out of it, like oh it's just fucking nuts. Dude. Do you think she got that on the first take? I don't know. <laughs> I think it, it seems so ca- like candid, like there's no way that was rehearsed. There's yeah, no way. It's a whole Sometimes. oh yeah. It's a whole talent that like you you gotta give them respect for. It. Yeah, yeah. Oh I yeah. I would never try something like that. What sure. squirting? <laughs> well, I would, try, I would try squirting, but I would never try shooting a dildo out. Dude, of and that's the seeing it shoot out like that. Because I obviously I, on my shows, I'm crowd working people, and I when I talk to nurses, the, one of the biggest things is people getting stuff locked, yeah. lost in their ass. Yeah. People lose it. So when I see some shoot, I'm like, that could have been up. That could have been an yeah, emergency. That could have been for everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's there's one Reddit I didn't know that I would like, and our tech guy put it on, but she fucks him. Yeah. I never. I, when he said that on the pod, I was like, "You're out of your mind." I was like, "You yeah. know what you like to do in the bedroom? I don't want to get pegged down. I'm I'm cool with that." And he's like, yeah. "No, trust me, just do it." And I went clicking on that. It was my first taste in Reddit porn, and I was like, "This is a magical world that I did not know existed." Well, so is it all pegging stuff? No, no. It's just like her Almost more cool. dominant and like on top. Like, what's she really, doing the Amazon like riding? Do you know the Amazon position? Please inform me what oh, the yeah. Amazon, oh, Amazon position is. Where she is technically riding you, but she's got your legs. Yeah, up. yeah. So I've like never had that like, before. So like but... your legs are up, but your dick is like pointed towards her, and she's just like humping. She's, it's insane. Yeah, yeah I, no, I don't want that one at all. Anything yeah. that has How to do, do with my legs up, up like... I don't like that. I, I try don't. It. I've been. <laughs> <laughs> try it, try it, dude. And stretch and try it. Like you know. Uh, I I, I tr- there's one girl who I was hooking up with for a bit who wanted to be like we would kind of switch back and forth and she when whenever she took like a more dominant position when we were fucking I it wasn't a turn on for me and I also didn't know what to do I felt like I don't know what to do like I don't know what to say yeah. I don't know what to like <laughs> like when I'm when I'm a, I'm like hey, you fucking whore like I'm fucking I know it but like I have no dialogue options for a chick being like uh, on top of me like holding my wrist down so I'm like oh ooh like <laughs> I have no Clue. Uh, so it's like it does. It doesn't really do a lot for me. You just take it. Just just take it all. Just take it. It's yours. You can have fun. Do what yeah. you want. I yeah. Just want to be dominant from the bottom and ended up smashing my own berries. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. 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 Like you know, she's on top riding and stuff. And I like smack butt. Yeah. I go to like smack it. And, and you I miss. Like completely miss. And you smack your own nuts. Bombed my nutsack. Oh, <laughs> bro. And I felt like I was like, you gotta get off. I think I got a shit. Yeah. 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 Dude, yeah, you. She had a little ass for sure. Like, yeah. She had a little tiny butt. If you're missing the ass, <laughs> yeah, that's. No, a, I was. I don't know. I, I was kind of drunk, so I think maybe I was just like, yeah. Just use her yeah. air. Yeah. Dude, you know, yeah. like, smacking your own nuts, dude. I've never heard of that, that going kind of down. Like one of the worst Ugh. pains I have endured in my adult life. Yeah, so yeah, for sure, like, man, dude. Trauma to my own groin. Yeah, and so then you, none of you guys ever had like a girl that wants you to call her mommy. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, done, okay, I've had that. Oh, yeah, okay, and yeah. that's like I'm like oh, I'll do that for you. Oh, I'm I'll, a I'm a pleaser. I'm right. expecting some fruit snacks. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I've had one girl. Like she was basically trying to kill me with her tits, and she's like, "You want to, mommy's tits are gonna kill you." I'm like. <laughs> It's, a, it's not a bad way to die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One of those Tempur Pedic titties. Yeah. yeah. One of those. So big, yeah. You can lay on them. Yeah. It's one dude. of those situations you have to completely take yourself out and be like, don't think about what's coming out of your mouth. You just be like, yes, kill me, mommy. Kill yeah. me. Because yeah. <laughs> if you think about it in that moment, you're like, what the what am fuck I am I in? Foolish. Asking? Where yeah. have I ended up in life? You no, know, that's part of the thing when a chick is trying to like dominate you or like be on top. Like, that gets me out of it. It's like, I could kill you. Like, <laughs> I could kill you right now. So, like, I can't get lost in this. 
Um, <laughs> but I do, I do love those fucking. You gotta hu- go a little more method on that. Yeah. <laughs> I do I love those huge when chick has huge tits. I call them like two handers. Like you fucking have to hold one tit with two hands yeah. just oh, yeah. to fucking just get like- it. It's so big. If you hold it with one hand, it kind of spills to either side, like one of those gel toys that, like, yeah. (laughs) Those are nice. Yeah. Give it a little shake, try to keep it balanced. Exactly, yeah. It's like washing, you know? It's like the ocean moving. Yeah, yeah. That's what I get, man. I don't know. I'm on board. I'm on board with that big time. It feels like a bag full of pudding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that fucking line from- uh, from, uh, Bag of sand. Yeah, 40 old virgin. It's like a bag of sand. sand, Have you ever fucked before? (laughs) Dude, that's so funny. bag of sand? Take this out. Oh. Right here. No, I just there's still a little juice in this guy. Okay. He's like, you gotta make sure it's there, dude. Yeah, 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 it's the last one in that container too, so it's fine. So, have you yeah. ended up uh, since you were doing a dry January? Yeah. Uh, how the the, temp- the temptations that you have received in your messages coming here for the shows in Cleveland this yeah. weekend? We saw on Instagram have been fabulous. Yes. How close were you to going in on one of those? And do you get those every time you go to towns? Not every time. Some towns are like super fruitful. Some towns not at all. There's plenty of towns where I don't fuck. Uh, but there's some like I think it was like Dallas or something. I fucked five chicks in that weekend, and that That's was like incredible. it was like, it's we're, like we're, a bouquet of flowers. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're doing. <laughs> Doing work, yeah. we're doing work. <laughs> it would, dude. The, so the yeah, Dallas, the Dallas weekend, I felt kind of bad because, like, I so each so it was like two in one night for two nights, and then the the before I left, I went and hooked up with this one other chick, and uh, I think it was the first night. I hooked up with this chick, and then this uh, girl hit me up, and she was like, hey, do you want to double team uh, me uh, with my boyfriend? And I was like, yeah, if I can swing through. But I had just nutted with this other chick. Yeah, so I start hooking up with her, and like, and her, her boyfriend's fucking her or whatever, and I just couldn't get hard because my I just oh, nutted just that. It, yeah. And like, so I the end, I managed to fucking muster up some boner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was even like, I, I think I even said to them, I was like, I feel like I'm disappointing my fans right now. No. <laughs> I felt I felt bad, dude. You ever yeah. have a situation where like they think that there's a shot after? Where like after you hook up in the town, they're like, "So what are you doing tonight? What are you doing tomorrow?" And you're like, "Oh no, this was not this. this oh, is not like the situation. Think, they think there's a love story in this." I I don't think I've ever gotten like I think people are pretty on board with what it is, especially because I'm very like. Uh, on occasion, I have, like, gone out for drinks with a girl before and, like, we'll hang out a little bit before or we've been texting for a while before. On occasion, that happens. But most of the time, I'm like, hey, do you want to come to the hotel room? Like, I'm very yeah. just oh, direct. Fine. Yeah, very yeah. direct about it. I don't try to blur the lines about yeah. what's going on. Sometimes they want to, like, hook up for the weekend. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I haven't done that. Uh, I guess I would if there wasn't. I don't know if it's ever happened where they want to hook up for the weekend and I don't have other options. Yeah. So, like, it's kind of like the, that novelty of having someone new come through is very fun. Well, with the state of the world right now, is this something, and I think the, the way you're handling it where you're very above board, you're like, if you want to come and do this, that's fine. It's not a situation where you're like, oh, I'm in love with you or, like, you're not love bombing or anything like that. Uh, are you worried about it taking a turn on you, though? I'm not because of how clear I am yeah. about it. Like, who is that Cleveland basketball player? The guy who Tristan was, Thompson? yeah, Tristan, yeah. Tristan Thompson, where he was like, she's like, I'm gonna be at your game, and he's like, oh really? And then she sends the like the emoji, and he's like, you trying to catch the pipe? Like he, oh, that like, was J.R. Smith. That was J.R. Smith. Oh, J.R. Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J.R. Smith. Oh, J.R. Smith. Yeah. So yeah, Fuck it, of course it's J.R. Smith. Well, because he's he slid in uh, <laughs> the DMs of uh, the old co-host on the radio show that I'm on. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. That. And literally just like. Pipe question mark. Yeah, like <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah, that was it. And I, I love the, the mission. Yeah. I think when you operate like that, I think it's when you blur the lines or you lie or you're trying to be yeah. manipulative trying in any sort. Hurt their feelings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that. When you're just like, hey, listen, like I want to have sex. If you also want to have sex, and yeah. like that's the game, then I think you avoid a ton of problems. Right. Yeah, yeah, just don't. My po- policy for a long time has been don't lie. Cause I I the like I dated this girl oh this was a while back and we were fucking and the sex was great and then she kind of gave me an ultimatum where she was like hey like I really like you we should date and then we dated for a bit and the dating wasn't great we kind of like fought a lot and I didn't want to date I didn't want to but I was kind of like oh I'm gonna lose the pussy so just like kind of like say you gotta, yes you gotta do what you gotta do gotta do what you gotta do and since then I've been like no just be if you don't want to date someone just be very upfront yeah uh, and if you keep fucking after they give you an ultimatum if they have to tell you hey this is just sex to me and if they want to keep hooking up then you keep going if not then you leave it and you go in another direction and find someone who's open to that right uh, and that yeah just saves you a ton of headache 
Has any of these girls tried to baby trap you? No. Um, or like, have you had any like scares? You no. Put the hot sauce in the condom? No, I don't do the hot sauce <laughs> in the condom. Um, but no, no girls have has tried to baby trap me. I think uh, most of the because of what I cultivate and because of who I am, I think most of these women are like. I wouldn't say anti-children, but definitely aren't, like, really looking to have kids. It seems, like, it seems like you have a good radar and, like, you can kind of pick up on, like, who is the right person for, for the situation yeah. through being that honest. Like, yeah. there's no games. There's no, like, like I said, love bombing or anything like that. It's it just, like, we're going to have some fun, ha- have some sex, and then, like, the we're gonna have some sex. Have a good yeah. night. And I, have a good night. I also think it's my perception and philosophy on sex is like that. It's it is this is not it's not like if uh, I think there was like definitely a while back. I think a lot of thought has changed on this, but like if a guy is having sex with a chick, he's almost like taking something from yeah. her. Yeah. He's like, oh, and it's like, oh, I'm having sex with you in the hopes that this develops into a relationship or something. But I think that mentality towards sexuality is completely gone. Like I think we, uh, everyone is out fucking yeah, and fucking. Just fuck. Yeah, it's just something you do for fun, as if you would go to like an amusement park like or parties. something. Like parties, yeah. And so I think going to that mentality like hey we're just ex- this is an equal exchange we're both fucking and we're both having a good time and that's it um yeah like i think all that that mentality it, it goes the same thing i was saying before it saves you a lot of problems is there any interest or any uh thing that has happened in the past where you get into the industry no uh i mean that oh, that yeah. question has been brought up to me a few times by a few different people um no one of like stature like there hasn't been like I don't know, like uh, uh, Lexus, Texas, yeah, Lexus, Texas, like being fan models wanting to collab. Yeah, exactly. Nothing like that has happened. A couple people have been like, "Oh, when is it going to happen?" I would like to do more stuff in that space of like interviewing porn stars, talking to porn stars, yeah. maybe making content and creating right, stuff with right. them. But I, because I, I find the porn space very interesting, and I also think it's also neglected from the mainstream. And yeah. these, some of these porn stars have a lot more star power than some massive celebrities. Yeah. Like I think, um, Angela White. like yeah, Angela White has more star power than like a like a lot of people you would see in like a multi million dollar movie. Um, so I think working in that space and creating stuff and comedy and porn have gone together hand in hand for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and comics are kind of in the same realm where there are, our craft is, is, um, uh, disregarded and not considered as art or not considered as, uh, as like a, a mainstream or whatever. It's, it's this sort of dark underground thing. It's changing a lot for both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is, is as much as I think I would want to get involved. Um, I would like to do like more exclusive comedy content that would require like a porn angle. Nothing I want to see on here because I have some good ideas that I wouldn't want to throw out that like would require stuff that isn't you couldn't put on cable. Right. uh, But isn't porn. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever feel shackled to it? No, I, I'm, you, you dude. Bring it in with open arms. I am so grateful for being in the position I'm in. I mean, yeah, like I said, I'm 31, and uh-huh. I'm already in a position where I'm like, oh, I could buy property. I could, I can keep touring. I have a fan base. I sell tickets. Like when I started doing stand up, I didn't know, I didn't think about where it would go. I just was just like, just get funnier. Yeah. And the fact that I'm in a position now where things are going quite well and and seem like they're going to continue to going well, uh, keep going well. Uh, I yeah, I'm just fucking happy. Happy, dude. Yeah. How long yeah. ago did yeah. you start stand up? Uh, I started stand up like eleven years ago. Okay, so oh, hell yeah, yeah. You've been doing it a long time and started at a very young age too. So that's that's a good. I was twenty two when I started. I've been uh, at about twenty years now. And uh, was there a moment where you felt it start to click, or like when you started to do crowd work and or like just like a bit that you were working on, and then it finally all kind of like came together. Do you have some of those aha moments? So the crowd work stuff, like we, the that kind of was an offshoot of us being forced to make our own work. Mm-hmm. So in Canada, there's a huge monopoly on comedy. Uh, the There's only really two companies that do like cross country tours. And one is this thing called Callback that does mainly just West Coast stuff, a lot of stuff in Alberta. Um, and then there's Yuck Yucks. And Yuck Yucks is kind of this like, like almost like a cancer on the Canadian comedy industry where they have they have tour they have clubs all over and they'll put you on tour if they like you and they'll work you if they like you but also if you sign with Yuck Yucks they don't want you to work any other clubs they, there's a lot of places they don't want you to go and do stand up even like within the city you're in oh, wow. and Big so time possession and they deal. pay you 
like if you get thirty thousand dollars a year from Yuck Yucks, you're one of the top paid dudes. Wow. Like they give you almost nothing and take everything, and they hold back so much talent. And so in order for us to get work, when we started to get to that like five, six, seven year mark of doing stand up, where you're like, okay, I got like forty five minutes. That is like good. Yeah. Uh, and. I want to test my headlining skills. These people weren't giving us an opportunity. So in order to make that opportunity for ourselves, uh, we started like cold calling venues and putting together our own tours. The first two tours, I did most of the booking for the first one. The second one I did half. And then the guys who I was on the road with, we I think we did five or six in total. They took over the entire booking side. So fucking huge shout out to fucking yeah, Andrew Packer out. and Jacob Bolshin. Shout who, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Andrew, who yeah. are like, Andrew's killing it right now. He has like over a million followers on YouTube. And like, yeah, yeah. he was here a uh, you uh over the summer uh and met him in a very funny dude and like love his work ethic love his uh ability to just get out there and, and just create oh yeah like, dude. all that stuff so he uh stuff. like the the crew that i went on the road with was great and that from doing like we were doing like bum fuck nowhere canada like we're going out to places like lac la biche alberta where it, i mean great town had super fun shows there that sounds but made up mm, yeah that's, that's, that's not real at all <laughs> but it's not a place where you're like oh this is a comedy hotspot. we right. were going to all these places where when we were doing a show in that town we were the only thing going on so then it made it way easier to sell tickets yep. and we would uh we would we wouldn't count on ticket sales we would charge the venue a flat rate and then they sell tickets for whatever the fuck they want so it takes the pressure of selling tickets off of us because we couldn't move tickets yeah right and so and the, it also puts the pressure on the venue to promote it because they're like okay we got this we got to make our money back at yeah. least on this uh i'm in a situation where like regionally i can sell tickets like we i did some shows with these guys out in uh their town and we, we moved a good amount of tickets yeah but, and, and it's helped you guys learn how to produce shows yeah and i oh, hope yeah. that through that, you've you've learned like okay, uh, we can create the hype around the comics mm -hmm. so that people will show up and and they know we put on a good show. Yeah, it's been new learning that we yeah. started hosting shows uh, two months ago, three months ago when mm -hmm. we had the first show with him and a local guy, Matt Roca. Shout out Matt. Uh, that was my show. We sold out the first show. We almost sold out the second show, and then we had Nick's show, which was the day before Christmas Eve, which was we were gonna p kind of put it to the test to see how that would go mm -hmm. out. And uh, we almost sold out that show. Christmas Eve is a hard market. Yeah, yeah, yeah hard we, time, though. Second, it was, like, yeah, it was the Saturday was. of Christmas. So yeah. we were like, let's see if people really want to show up. And we almost sold it out. And now we have this one coming up next weekend, actually. He's opening mm -hmm. up for uh, John Armstrong and Noah yeah. Ryan's. Yeah, uh, January 27th. Right on. John's the guy that's hosting for you this weekend. Okay, so awesome. Oh, awesome. hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so like, I love that DIY attitude of like, okay, there's not a space for me. I'm going to go make one. And then you can implement that. It also gives you a matter of worth way earlier on than if you are just, like you said, going to Yuck Yucks and they say this is what you get paid yeah. no matter what. And that can be devastating when you get locked into that and you, you go, is this even worth it anymore? And it kind of takes a lot of the fun and the creativity out of it because you're so worried about just paying bills and stuff. So when you, when you get to that mark, of like, okay, we're making enough money for me to focus on the jokes and the creativity and, and have fun up there, not just trying to sell T-shirts or merchandise to, to make ends meet. It, it's a very uh, good way to go about it. So uh, for you being as young as you were when you did that, I, I, I got to give you props for that. Yeah, and, and that is it made us so much better as comedians. Yeah, being able to get to stretch your legs, get the long stage time, perform in all in front of all these different audiences That's and different huge too. challenges. Yeah, like some shows were good, some shows were real bad. Yeah. understanding how to like set up a room and like the importance of like the the lighting. Like there was some shows where it, it was like we're doing a three o'clock show, so we get there early and put like garbage bags on the windows so it seems so dark in the room. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, stuff like that to really make it happen, and that's where we started to really get like crowd workshops because sometimes you're in a, a place where like none of your material is really going to relate with, with these people and yeah. like crowd work was your way to like uh, cobble together a set and then it wasn't until right before I left to move to New York I did a, like a going away show I did one show at Comedy Bar in Toronto uh, and I started with crowd work because I would typically what I was doing up to that point when I was headlining is I would do 10 of crowd work off the top and then go into material and I did 10 and then 10 turned into 15 and 20 and then I think I was doing 45 and I look at my 
my uh, phone because I'm always timing. And I'm like, oh, I've been up here for 30 minutes just doing crowd work. And so I was like, okay, keep it going. See, let's challenge myself, see if I can do it. And yeah. I did do the whole thing. And then with the crowd work clips being kind of the backbone of promoting yourself as a yeah. comic right now, so you're yeah. not burning your material, it just became a necessity for my shows to implement both, where I'm like, I'll do a bunch of crowd work off the top, and then we'll go into the material in the second half. And then also when I'm doing crowd work bits, they'll flow, or crowd work moments, they'll flow into bits. Uh, and then uh, we'll get a big pop, and then I can move on to like kind of the next question I want to ask people with the crowd work. Uh, and yeah, I just I just see it as something that you have to kind of be doing. I mean, you don't have to. There's a lot of people who are making. There's a lot it of, the, there's that's the thing. There's no one way to do yeah. it, and that's why when people get on people about doing crowd work, I'm like, it, it's it's either good crowd work or it's bad crowd work. It's either good joke writing or it's bad joke writing it's either for you or it's not for you so trying to gatekeep or trying to minimize what somebody else is doing out there getting fans that maybe you're jealous of or it doesn't it doesn't matter like if you want to do something you have to put stuff out but i know so many people that complain about you know like a guy like matt Wright or something like that i'm like yeah but you don't post anything yeah all you say is i have albums out already and like nobody like that's not that's not going to activate Dude, anybody to do anything re-record those albums with uh with, video, with yeah. video and put all the bits out individually if like yeah. that material is already burnt and like yeah, it, exactly yeah. it's like yeah they're it's just it's the same as like you go back to whatever the 80s and the 90s it's like you had to work for late night and write for a tv show maybe you're writing jokes that you're not super passionate about or like this is just you if you're making it through any industry you're going to be paying your dues and then one of the new formats of paying your dues in stand-up is doing crowd work clips and that's just how it is yeah. and they're fun i think there's some really fun ones out there I, I really enjoy watching what you do with them and like you said when you can take a uh, crowd work tie it into your material and then kind of bring it together and give that audience such a unique experience that's kind of one and done that that gets people to come back and see you again yeah because yeah, they yeah. know even if i hear material that he did in a previous set i know there's going to be some aspect of it that is unique in individual for this exact performance and that will get people coming back again and again and again so that you can even kind of like play hits but also like what you were saying what Bert does with the machine story where he keeps himself engaged with that story and the people that have seen him multiple times by adding asides and adding things into it that aren't always there yeah yeah we've since we started this podcast we've started to learn more about comedy and like talk to comedians and everything got a great relationship with bill now and we've learned how important that is and so seeing it producing our own shows now we had Chris Harvey on the second show, and Chris Harvey's fucking phenomenal. And he went in there and absolutely killed the room with crowd work for, like, 20 minutes. And we had Nick went up there. He did good. And then we had Elijah Nevels, who also mm -hmm. is phenomenal, went up there. He did his work. He did a little bit of crowd work, and you could tell that they were, like, there and not there. And when Chris went to make it more personal, everybody moved up in their seat. It was, like, yeah. that experience yeah. you're talking about is exactly what I saw was, like, okay, Everybody left there wanting to see Chris again because they're like, what is he going to say? Mm -hmm. Like, he'll say those same jokes, but that crowd work he did to that table was mm -hmm. the best thing of the night. And yeah. I was like, yeah, that makes so much sense to where as long as you have that personal connection with them, it's like I know that I can sit there and he might pick on me. And it's kind of like a I, – I would imagine in comedy it's kind of hard for some people with, like, the Matt Rife stuff that's happened or it's like people are going to shows to try and dress up, to be on a video and mm -hmm. try and do that. And it, it's yeah. gotta be annoying. No, like I definitely, I find my audience isn't, they're just there to come out and have a good time. I love my audience. They're wonderful. And because I get to do both, I get to like, it's almost a 50 50 split down the middle in terms of what I'm going to give them. Um, and then it's also like, I see as this goes on, I'll be weaning out of it, the crowd work and like the natural moments that'll happen will happen, but it'll be more the the material, material. like move more into that, uh, that space. But it's like for now, for the amount of tickets I'm selling and for how I have to promote myself, these clips are are vital yeah do you yeah. have uh, a special in the can are you filming one or so we're shopping something around now yeah. uh so i have like my hour ready to go um and we're shopping that around and then i have like the next like i probably have a good 30 that's that i like right now like maybe a loose 45 mm -hmm. um that i'm getting ready for whatever the next thing is but right. yeah so we're, we're shopping something around now uh, and hopefully someone wants to buy it or finance it, and if not, I'll just self-finance. Like, I think putting stuff out on YouTube is always, like, a great option. My yeah. YouTube is not cooking, but you never know. That could be the thing that pops right. it off, 100%. right? Yeah.
that's that is one of those things that it, it's tricky like i when they started promoting shorts on youtube i got a big pop from that mm -hmm. but turning those shorts subscribers into actual engagement is a real tricky thing to do yeah like i got seventy thousand subscribers but none of them watch anything unless the long form yeah the long form stuff so it's i mean it's like, like when i put a special out on there it did they did come for that but like my weekly uploads and stuff like that they're just like you know they'll watch it a little bit but it's not it's it's not part of their algorithm really for me like i think it would like obviously it's great if you can get a lot of retention on your long form because that'll pay yeah yeah like you get good money off of your youtube from that but for me, I'm like, the goal has always just been butts and seats. Yep. So if I'm getting uh, views off of shorts or Facebook or Instagram or, or uh, Snapchat's a big one now too, yeah. uh, wherever you're putting your stuff out, if you're able to get that good retention and people are coming out off of it, I'm like, let's fucking go. Have you let's found go. it tricky on Snapchat because they're so tight with- uh, Snapchat's very strict. Very strict. Uh, like I've some of the all, stuff- I've had stuff pop and then uh, get like blocked- like after you know thirty thousand or hundred thousand views, and yeah. Like, Whoops, and, and I'll be like, I don't, I really don't know what the line is for them or what they want or don't yeah. want. Like I think, I think I have an idea of what TikTok doesn't want. I don't know what they do want. Right. I was talking about this with, <laughs> I was just having this conversation with my buddy where he's doing well on TikTok, and so we're like trying to hash out like what because you'll post something and it's like a certain style or a certain form of whatever and then you're like okay i'll try to stick in that realm and it'll do whatever get like fucking uh, 10 million views off a video and then so you're like okay well if i post something similar to that and it's like feed it with the jokes write a new script around like the commentary on this video or whatever the thing is, is that you did and then you post it and it gets like like ten thousand views you're like what the i have no clue what they want over there instagram i have a pretty good idea and facebook same thing facebook and instagram are usually pretty consistent for instagram me. is at least like you said consistent because and i'm sure you guys because you've had clips pop yeah and yeah. i feel like all of us have probably had the most consistent like when we know what to put on Instagram and get results from, yeah. whereas the other ones, it's just like they just go every once in a while. They go, well, this one, and you, and you think yeah. you got something, then it There's all. There's nothing better than for Instagram for the videos that you just expect to not do anything for those to go, and you're like, but what the fuck well, am I yeah. doing different with this? <laughs> I don't know, man. Some things just take. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too is you. That's the lesson you have to learn within yourself is to go. I'm not gonna. Obsess over Come the ones that don't. In, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, get back into this. Yeah. I kind of ride it up, and then when I feel like a little too jittery, I'm like, okay, take it out. Uh, that's the thing I do really like about the Zen is that it's like uh, weed is like you smoke weed, you smoke a joint, you're in the realm of weed for like four hours. Yeah. Like with the Zen, it's like, man, I'm uh, as soon as it's done and it's out, it's like maybe an hour of the whole experience. I'm like, fuck, let's go. Just absolutely locked in. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it, dude, love it. Oh, bro. Cody Ray. Um, yeah, you there have you a couple, you have a couple of shows coming up tonight. Do you have like a pre-show ritual? Oh or yeah, is it pretty actually, much like yeah, my my pre-show ritual. Uh, Such a good question every time, and we're like, Cody Ray, you should you should ask your question. Well, <laughs> do like, it every time. Like a lot of the comedians like don't necessarily have one, but I've noticed like some singers do and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I guess it just depends on the type of personality. It depends on the person. Um, same thing. We started this when we were on the road in Canada. We would do the Wim Hof breathing before we would go on stage. So if you guys know, Wim, yeah, what is that? So Wim Hof is like he's the Ice Man, that guy who does like the cold plunges and like okay. who, uh, controls okay. all with his breathing. So he has this. Uh, it's not his. He's just uh, popularized, and he's very open about that. But it, it, you basically do a system of hyperventilation. You take uh, 30 breaths, like 30 yeah. in a row, and then you breathe out completely, and then you hold your breath for as long as you can, and then you breathe in, hold for 15 seconds, and then repeat. And I'll do three rounds of that, and that spikes your adrenaline. It uh, oxygenates your blood. It gets you very focused. It really wakes you up. Wow. And something I, I, yeah. something I just started doing was when I start the Wim Hof breathing, I'll put a Zen in. Gotta be locked in. Yeah, yeah, fucking really shout out to Zen. Sponsor these guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they use it. He uses it. It's, We're about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, honestly, it makes me like I had a bad experience the first time. Him talk. I didn't know there was levels to Zen. I'm oh, gonna yeah. try. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try a lower level and try to work good. myself up. Yeah, yeah. He's a threes guy. I'm a six. Guy. 
the nicotine focus is huge. Um, but yeah, that that is always a pre-show ritual. Uh, you know, you try to like, there's the little things. Don't fucking, don't be hungover. Uh, make sure you get a good night's sleep. Like my whole, like like last night, some people were like, yo, come out. We're going to the fucking strip club. We're doing this. I'm like, I got two shows tomorrow. Like I can't, I can't, can't I won't. Party like, like, yeah. I, yeah, I, like I went home, I ate a fucking, I got like a steak salad at the Ooh, club. Solid. Ate that and then watched anime and went to sleep. Like that was my <laughs> shit last night. Uh, That's good discipline to have too when you're on the road because it is so tempting, especially when you are selling tickets and you, you know, it makes you feel like a, a star and you go, okay, let's go out and do this. And, and you can learn real fast that it burns you out and oh, can wreck yeah. everything. So for you to have that mindset of like, ah, I got to focus, I'm here to do work, uh, that's impressive. Yeah. You for got- someone that's only 31, because, you know, there's plenty of people that come through here and they, are in their 40s and 50s and they tear it up and then you know, Absolutely they still are out. able to turn it on on stage but you can tell it's it it they're pulling from deep yeah and like i don't uh, like people are paying to come see me and they're excited to come see me and i want the fucking show to be a smash right and i want to give them everything i possibly give them that's why i do the wim hof breathing that's why i'm putting this in and because i'm like well the quality of the show is like that's whatever that's why you're putting five this in ten yeah. percent better <laughs> yeah. but i'm like all these little things make sure you're hydrated make sure you're taking your supplements make sure you're getting a good night's sleep all those th- like I individually, one of those things you might not see a huge shift, but if you're doing them all, you, the quality of what the product you're going to create is going to be so much better. And oh, yeah. so, yeah, that that that's the biggest part of like the pre-show ritual will be like all kind of day today. I'll be getting my shit done. I had my workout earlier. I'll make sure I'm eating clean because you want to be like focused. What was what go, going to social media? What was the one because you've absolutely hit fire over the last X amount of time for social media tiktok you have what 7.7 i think it was i saw it's unreal uh what was the one that you you probably had a couple prior to it what was the one that actually hit numbers numbers we were like holy shit like this could actually work in my network so there was um i had started it like kind of all trails back to me doing i worked for this youtube channel for a while called most amazing top 10 and uh it was like you would script like a top 10 list and then you would record it and i would try to make them funny and stuff and then they put me on the reaction channel and that was just me riffing and that comboed with i took an improv acting class to because i wanted to book more commercials because that was kind of like what was really paying me when i was like a beginner comic that allowed me to make sure i was making rent and so that that improv acting class taught me like trust your first thought that within the reaction channel then the TikTok came around right before i started posting stuff on TikTok seriously i made this series of uh of uh instagram stories about the show called blood of zeus and about how fucking ridiculous the opening of the show is because it's like zeus is spying on this chick and she's married to this king and then he, uh zeus would like transform himself into the king and come and bang her and like and like oh, yeah, oh, what? What? dude and then at one of the points she calls him out on it and then it's like What's it? Hera, whoever his wife is, is like watching Zeus from heaven, being like, I can fucking see his light in this woman's <laughs> room. And then, so she comes fucking i can't remember who it was one of the other gods sees that uh hair is looking and so he comes through a mirror and he's like yo zeus your wife is fucking watching right now <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and so zeus goes back to olympus and she walks into his room and she's like she's like that the fact that he's there she's kind of like huh and she goes where were you and he goes oh i was with poseidon and he goes oh i was with the boys that was his excuse <laughs> And I was like, this is the most absurd dog (laughs) shit I've ever seen. There's supposed to be like noble gods. And he's like, I was hanging with the boys. And he's like cheating on his wife. (laughs) So I made a series of these of these stories of me just shit talking this show. And I put it up and I I still have it saved on my Instagram. It's one of like your memories things. Because I was like, I thought I really liked making it. And then I was like, okay, let me try to implement this in a different way. And then I saw my buddy, Andrew, actually, who was doing TikToks and- This was during COVID where um, we uh, we were doing a show in fucking Kingston, Ontario, and there was like maybe – we were doing like five shows, and then there would be like 50 people at each show. Uh, and he made a TikTok and posted it and got like 3,000 views. And I'm like, man, I would have to do fucking whatever 20 shows at this venue or 30 shows at this venue to be able to hit that same audience. Or no, what is it, 60 shows? Yeah, because it's 50 people there. 
Um, so I was like, all right, even if they're getting 3,000 views, it's worth it. So right. I just started making this content with that same idea in mind of just doing this commentary. And I was like, everything you make, try to punch in as many jokes as possible. The bells and whistles of how it's recorded and how um, – how the, the the video looks or what you're commentating on, that's not the important part. The important part is the jokes. Mm -hmm. And so then I took that to this one video that was going, uh, ev everyone was commenting on it. It was one girl and there was like, 12 black dudes behind her and they're in a bathroom and they're all looking in the mirror and everyone's commentary was like she's gonna get railed blah 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 can you da 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 and so I was like okay well what think outside the box think outside of the first joke what's your joke you can make about this and I was like oh you're gonna learn instead of being like oh she's getting fucked or whatever I was like you're gonna learn the pecking order of this friend group very quickly That's like, great. like That's who so good. is the top dog where are you in the friend group and you're also gonna learn can you perform in front of your friend do you have what it takes to get the job it's done? So yeah. good. And so it was always like, take something and think of a joke that's like outside of the first thought, which I think is just that's just natural joke writing. That's right. what you want to do. Uh, and I just kept going with that theme. And I mean, I make a lot of content. So sometimes I'm like, fuck, I just gotta get content out today. But there have been some. There's one that I just reposted that I that I'm like, this is one of my best. Uh, it's this girl on the fan bus and they're interviewing they always interview these girls Yo. on the fan bus and they go what's your sexual fantasy and she goes i want to be locked in a room with my boyfriend his three brothers his dad his grandpa I've seen that one. Uh, yeah and then it, it cuts to me and i'm like it's just nice that we can all get together like this <laughs> and i'm like that's the everyone wants to say she's for the streets whatever yeah. blah 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 i'm like no the funny part about this is it's hard to get your family together for an event <laughs> and hang out and like catch up like exactly hey, Devin, how you been man it's yeah been i think one of my favorite ones is the what was it the Taekwondo or something like that, where the guy, where she's got the guy pinned and she rubs her pussy all over his face, and they're like, "Oh, I'll sign me up." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, one jujitsu, please. Yeah, jiu what it was. That's something I've been trying to do more of. Where I was like, I definitely do like a lot of just straight talking to camera reaction, but I was like, if I can do like a little sketch afterwards, that's fun. Yeah, uh, and use the like the video at the beginning as the prompt for the sketch. So I did one recently that was like a girl getting waxed, and she was like, "Oh, the I wanted to record my reaction," and she heard the lady go like, "You have a beautiful." Beautiful vagina and she's like thank you and then so then it cuts and I do this little sketch after that is like if dudes went to the esthetician and I'm like that's your hog bro fucking sick <laughs> I'm like I'm dude I'm gonna make you look good I was like I'll let you fuck my wife with that hog <laughs> and then I'm like yo man you want a zin dude and I fucking pull my lip out and I got a zin in like that I'm like hey if you can do a little sketch after try to do more of those because those are fun and I think it's a little bit of a different take um, and I don't do sketches in any other way, but I have ideas for sketches. And it also keeps in that realm of where I don't need the bells and whistles. I don't need like a three camera shoot. Yeah. I don't need labs or anything like that. Right. It's just quick and yeah, fun yeah. And, 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 I can, and punchy. Yeah, yeah, I can create a green screen, get a, the joke across, and that's it. And the quality of what people are coming for is the joke, not the setting or the scene or the fucking uh, 4K camera. No, I, I had one that I wanted to do, oh. wanted Elijah to do. Okay. When the guy jumped over and attacked the judge, yes, because uh, oh like that night everybody was talking about it at, at all the comedy shows, and I was Elijah's like this nineteen-year-old black kid, and I wanted him to do a post-game press conference of that, oh, where he's just yeah. like he's like. Uh, through God, all things are possible, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> he would have yeah. killed that. I know, and it, but it, like the it, that was such a quick thing. Like it was that day, and then yeah. it. it, it went, That's something yeah. I'm trying to get better at. Yeah. Is what is the current thing, and yeah. do something on that thing. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I. Uh, sometimes I lag on that a little bit, and I'm like, you really want to hit the whatever the when thing is. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the same thing, come with that outside-of-the-box joke yeah. so that you have a different take on it. One of the best ones I saw from the um, uh, from the uh, the whole fucking Jewish tunnels thing, Dude, the one of the so – hey, that's <laughs> so – one of the most insane things that's happened. But – that what happened with that there was this meme that was going viral that was it's kane in wwe and he's getting dra dragged underground and it says when you say free palestine on a, on a new york street and he's like no! yeah. 
and I'm like, that that's what you that's the joke you want to find. You yeah. want to find that joke. There's always someone who like wins a trend, I would say it yeah. say. And I'm like, that joke won the trend for me at least. I yeah. was like, that was the best joke that came out of this. In that whole thing, there was one, it was uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Juice. Yeah. And it was a photo and it was four of them, and we got it sent to us, and they were like, All jokes aside on this, why does this photo look like boogered up? <laughs> I swear to God, Damn. it has it looks exactly like the crew of Boogered <laughs> Up in the drain. And I was like, like what the fuck is going on here? And I was like, do we post this for shits and giggles or are we about to get smoked if we're like, yeah, yeah that was yeah. actually us? Yeah. <laughs> is yeah. that is that your algorithm that you get these from or do people send them to you? I, I It's a mix of both. So mo- I would say most is my algorithm. I was about to say having a dry January and having to make contact. You're yeah. like, oh, no. <laughs> Every now and again, something comes through. I find my algorithm, my usually my Instagram Reels algorithm is the hottest. And it's not even, I don't get really like any ass or titties on my Instagram uh, algorithm, or my Reels algorithm at least. It's mostly like, if I was to describe it, like people's misfortune. Like it would be, <laughs> it'll be like a kid eating ice cream and it falls over. And then a guy on a skateboard and it hits him in the nuts. And then like, it just, yeah, it, a series of that. Like mm. one of the fucking funniest videos I saw is this dude, he has his foot up on like, on like a table or something. Cause his big toe, the nails like partly ripped off. Oh, so you yeah. can tell he's like, oh. he's just resting it. And his buddy comes up and sprays cologne on it. And he's like, <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> That that is my Instagram algorithm. (laughs) Oh, dude, it's so. I would say more of like when I'm scrolling my main feed. You know how you'll get like a series of reels to look at. That's where the ass comes from. The ass is in that part. My search page a little bit too. Um, But I, a lot of the ass stuff gets sent to me. I got one cooking that I'm excited to put out today. Uh, well, yeah, it'll be out by the time people hear this, but there was these, like, four super hot midgets that made a video, and I was like, I, de- I'm i doing a video about, like, deep diving into their stuff because they have this thing called Tiny Tenders where they're bartenders, and they're bartending a Super Bowl party in uh, oh, in Nevada. Like and- from South Park. Dude, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, you know, I was, I just tried to did like a bunch of uh, puns. I do like a series of puns. Like, uh, I, I can't remember what I said first. I was like, I'm converted to mini muff, like just stuff. And like he kept the puns going throughout the video. And then was like, at the end, I'm like, how do I get the tiny tenders at a Chaterina show? Like, I want that so bad, dude. But um, that, tenders. that I can't remember how I found that video. It might have been sent to me, but that might have been a natural algorithm thing. I love that for you. I love that yeah. you're dry January. You're like, all right, now I'm going to put myself to the test. I got to make content, but also not get bricked up and go at it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I X has a lot of like ass and titty too. X, so my, like, X, I'm not on a ton. Uh, I would say my Twitter's like not really cooking, but I, I mean, I'm still, I'm posting there every day. Uh, but I don't really know what. A t- a Twitter is offering me like Twitter some of the shit on there is fucking horrifying yeah. like like that's the most where I'll see like people just dying like bro, uh, I swear why to God, is that a I, thing I, yeah bro I swear to God or you just see people falling from skyscraper yeah you know, also like, why do I stop and actually watch it through well cause you're like holy <laughs> shit yeah you can't like, believe it yeah. last night I had like three head stomp videos back to back to back after like the third one I was like I know what's gonna happen I can't watch that this one again yeah. page is restricted videos I know it because it doesn't have <laughs> Funny bone. Like a profile picture is just like a question mark in a yeah. tray. And like, bro, I'm like, oh my God, like. This dude just got his leg caught in a wood chipper. Yeah. See this shit. And oh. I'm just like, why is this on? Like, that's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a lot of it, but I'll get that. And then sports stuff, my X algorithm, I get very little um, content to react to from. I still look at it every day to try and find something because right. you never know what's going to be trending on there. And they have a whole, I think Twitter is very current. Twitter is very yeah, like, yeah. this is the new hottest thing. And and it, I think it gets there before it gets to like Instagram or something. So it's good to be on top of those things. Did you guys see uh, what's going on on X with, uh, with, uh, no, oh, Mr. Beast? Uh, no. well, he posted a, his a video actually, directly to there, yep, right? It actually, so they were talking about it with Musk and him and such. And they were going at it about like, uh, putting out a full video 
and doing that so then you can see how much money comes in from ads on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And so I think I saw yesterday he posted it and he said Monday he's going to show how much because it was like 100, last time I saw it was like 153 million views on it. Yeah. So I wanted to see how much uh, X was actually paying out people. But I'm curious to see if that might be an actual push if he starts making that an actual payable thing that can compete with YouTube. Yeah. If, he's, if that's where he's going to get, because he's been at a loss forever with X. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Put yeah. Out a couple episodes. Uh, on Just on X because uh, yeah. like the they would get, episode. yeah. Yeah. The, well, what, what I've heard, what people are saying that X could potentially be is the new platform for podcasts because people are like, YouTube's amazing, but they do have a lot of censorship rules and yeah. being able to work around that because like, yeah, an hour long podcast, you say this thing or that thing or you're and you also we're like we're podcasting. You're you're just going. Yeah, you're not. Right. I'm not thinking about like, oh, am I saying this? What opinion is this? Da, da, da. And, yeah. and like, well, just and, the fact that we talked about the tunnels in New York, that might. Be something right. that they'll be like, eh, can't talk about the tunnels in New York. Yeah. yeah. Immediately. Yeah, so, gets, so yeah. free for Einstein. We're <laughs> 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 doing that. And so that that's the the freedom is something that I, pe I think people are really looking for. I've said this for a little while, and I don't know if it's true, but I think we'll take. we're gonna uh, Here we go. we're we're gonna go into a realm of what is basically HBO for these. Um, I don't, you can't even call them streamers, like these uh, social media platforms. Okay. So we have right now what I think we're in is like the cable era of when you had like CBS, NBC, mm -hmm. you have like great sitcoms, great series, but no, you can't swear, you can't show tits, you can't do any of that stuff. And as an audience gets older and wants mature content but still consumes media through this this medium, mm -hmm. they're going to want that. And so someone is going to make what is akin to HBO for these, where it's like now, yeah, what if you want to have a sketch where you have – uh, tits, tits in it. it yeah it's like what it, it it doesn't have to be like derogatory or or violent or anything but it's just like a part of the joke or a part of whatever just the way like sopranos was like okay we're gonna have swearing and tits and stuff yeah, right. in it and make Andy mcbride does a lot of that with this stuff too yeah. Yeah. yeah and so that that i think is what we're going i don't know when but i it i think it's budding now because we're definitely moving away from the censorship stuff and moving away from like the the pc culture the cancel culture like yeah. that wave is is ending yeah and, and when, when you've done this as long as i have you see that pendulum going swinging back and forth yes because it goes when i started it was pretty things were pretty tight because it was right after the tit was on the super bowl so like everything everybody was worried about what you can say on tv and radio so everything w was real tight but then because of the rise of social media and xm serious xm radio and stuff like that it started to loosen up again and then you got the uh me too era and then things kind of tightened up again and now it's going back the other way like, people want i mean you see it with people at your shows where they want you to push some yeah. boundaries yeah. and have some fun. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they want you to be hateful or shitty or anything like that, but they just want to hear something that isn't sanitized. Yes, yes, yes. that's a great way to put it, sanitized. Yeah, I'm not going into that room so then I can still worry about what's going on outside. Right. Yeah. That's why, like, I was a big fan of Grey's Anatomy, and I was watching that. I watched fucking, like, all the way to, like, season 14 or whatever the hell yeah. it was. But then, like, every time on Sure you Thursday, don't like to get pegged? No, <laughs> hey, hey, let me tell you. Let me tell you, dude. That show fucks, all right? Back in the day, I was in college, I would I would skip classes just to sit there and binge watch. watch Grey's really? Grey's dude, wow. Grey's Anatomy used to. <laughs> but like uh, there was one season that it was just all like with COVID that was going on and everything of that nature. They were having every single episode was about something in the real world. And I was yeah. like, for this hour, I don't want that. Yeah. I want to sit down and not worry about anything else except mm. for just laughing or mm. like feeling emotions or whatever yeah. that is. So I'd imagine with what you're saying, with what we've seen, it's definitely pushing more to like, a, hey, make me like a little uncomfortable. Make me have to take a shower after that joke yeah. because it's like kind of fucked up, but I'm laughing. And it's also like I, f I feel like we put, I don't know, I don't want to say we, but like there was this tone that it was like media's responsibility to have some sort of re representation or some sort of cleanliness or something like that, where it's like, I mean, that you should have that standard for like your politicians and your police chief and like for the people who right, have like yeah. an actual physical impact on your life and like media does is so little it to uh, change what's going on around you in the world. It's it's supposed to be a little bit of a distraction. It's supposed to be your circus that you enjoy. And so I I, I hope and I think we are going to end that 
a necessity for it to have a message on top of what it's trying to do. And it also is a thing where when you're talking about certain topics, you're acknowledging that a lot of us are pretty powerless in these situations. Mm -hmm. Like you, you take what's happening in Israel and Palestine None of us here can do shit. Like there's yeah. not there's not right. one like we're posting an infographic on our story isn't gonna make them Making go. All right, like well now that now that Che posted it, we'll see do a ceasefire. Like they don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's 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 and so when you can make light of those things and 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 kind of take some power away from the heaviness of the situation and just say hey we can cry or we can laugh and I'd rather laugh. Yeah, and yeah, yeah and like and if you do want to see those changes like. I don't know. Don't go for comics for that. Like, yeah. like they're yeah. like, it's like, yeah. Don't tune into the Boogered Up or Bill's or Fire Show to the- find out the answer of how we can solve the world. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I don't got the answers. And I that, part of the reason why I avoid politics in my comedy is, one, because I'm not very well informed on them. Mm-hmm. And two, I don't think people should come to me for any uh, advice on those things. Right. You should go to people, like the way I've I've You come to Che for gooning. Yeah, for gooning. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the bottom of gooning. That's what we're doing over here. Uh, and like, and you should, if you do want some headway on that, there's someone out there who has taken the same amount of time I've taken towards comedy that to like social issues and social justice or to political standings and educated themselves on that. That's who you should be going towards. What's his name? Dave Smith? Dave Smith? Uh, Dave, Dave Smith. Uh, or even a guy like John Stewart. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, Those are the that's people. what he's good at. Like, yeah. that's why he was the Daily Show host. That's why he's got the, the Apple show. The, the reason is because he is well versed in all this stuff i talk about having man tits like that's a different yeah. like you don't yeah. don't uh, same thing like don't ask me how i feel about political stuff now there are certain topics where like they hit closer to home for me and i'll talk about those but it doesn't mean i'm like dismissing or or trying to make a political stance it's just something that affects my life so i talk about it yeah that's what i like about podcasting too is like i've listened to a handful of different eras of it and mm-hmm. such to where i'm like okay i can see that this person has a belief system of this and i'm not going to take it for mine and i'm yeah. going to listen to them and see what they have to say even if it's like like i'm a like, i'm a fan of flagrant so like mm-hmm. andrew schultz so like mm-hmm. hearing what he has to say i'm not going to hear him and think he's a news and be like yeah so i'm going to take this and this is what i'm going right. to believe but i'm going to get the joke out and i'm going to enjoy that and then yeah. going all the way to like undisputed when shannon sharp was there yeah i listen to that all the time and yeah. just hearing his take and fucking skip bayless but hearing that so i'm like putting all these things together to have a mindset of what i want to believe which is awesome for like you said the world that we're in now with yeah. all these different outlets yeah. for it you can kind of pick and choose what you want dude shannon sharp has had a wild rise dude. i dude. love dude. his ride yeah i love now that he is unfiltered and crazy and i love the fact i'm a massive Bengals fan yeah so the fact that he's got it with ocho now with yeah. this show i've I tuned in to Undisputed purposely to see him deal with Skip. And we've had episodes where we're like, fuck Skip Bayless. Yeah. Or just flat out, <laughs> Skip Bayless sucks. And for him to do that, go off, and then pick Ocho up, because I was yeah. a fan of, um, God bless, what's the podcast he has with, he used to have with Fred Taylor. And, oh, the dudes. Oh. Uh, it's not Pivot. It's not Pivot. It was, mm-hmm. um, oh, my God, what was it called? I Am Athlete mm-hmm. with Brandon Marshall. They were, Ocho was on that. Mm-hmm. He was that So, but, uh, he was that personality. He was yeah. that outlandish, I'm going to eat McDonald's every day and yeah. I'm going to yeah. be fit. And then you get Shannon and him together. I'm like, that is what everybody is always Yeah, wanted. dude. It's yeah, that yeah. one right dude, there. Dude, they're funny together, too. I see some clips every now and again from them. I've never, like, tuned in, but they, their clips are in my algorithm big. Phenomenal. Time. They're so good at what they do, man. The, uh, the I, one was just how much it was like, would you get paid? It was like a $500,000 to do OnlyFans or something like that. Would yeah. you get paid to be a part of that? And Shannon was like, how many inches they want? How many <laughs> inches they want? I'll take it all out. I'll do the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the personality you know of Shannon Sharp to go on that line. You're like, oh, this is well, the and, great and that's, world we live in. That goes to what we were talking about where like there's these new portals opening up where people want their athletes to be real people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we don't want, you know, we know Shannon Sharp and Ocho Cinco have lived crazy lives and we want them to be able to expound on that and be the bros that they are without being punished for it and without espn going guys can't talk about it like that and that's why i think it's good that mcafee ended up on espn because it's taken not just chains off of him but off the other uh personalities where like Stephen a is going on like 
He just lit up. Uh, what what's was that oh, clip? Dude. That was uh, nuts. Dude, talking yeah. shit about uh, he, what did he what, say? What, like, Jason yeah. Whitlock or whatever. He called you just like eyes in the camera yeah. is like you bitch. And I yeah. was like, who is this guy? What call, are we doing? Yeah, here? Calling him fat. That calling bitch, him a bitch. Yeah. I had like, to look that guy up. I'm like, yeah. I don't know who he's talking about, but he hates him. I, I, I he, he was a guy that was on ESPN, and then he like took more of like a hard right stance, and so like he 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 does more stuff for like Fox News and stuff like that, uh, and just. Perpetually throws shade at Stephen A. Smith, and Stephen has taken the high road for long enough. And Stephen A. Smith is like, "I'm not doing that anymore because this it, you're you're making this not just personal, but like personal attacks." And so he took yeah. the gloves off. Yeah, that was wild. I was like, I was of two minds about that because I think because now we all are talking about this guy who we didn't even know existed right. yeah. before. Right. So I think it's almost better just to let them live in obscurity. Like you saw um, like uh, when fucking, what's his name? Uh, uh, Pusha T did the blast on fucking Drake and like yeah. demolished him in that fucking, yeah. in that, uh, uh, what, what are those called again? When you freestyle. fuck? Yeah. yeah, yeah free, the, not a battle. Freestyle. What's diss going track. Diss track. Oh, yeah. Diss track. He fucking smashed him in the diss track. But Drake doesn't respond because then if Drake responds, it fucking it elevates lights. Pusha yeah. T yeah. so much. And th that's what happened with Eminem and Machine Gun Kelly. Eminem responds, and then Machine Gun Kelly has right. a career. Yeah. Right. Um, not that Pusha T doesn't have a career. Pusha <laughs> right. T is fucking doing really fucking well. But it would have, it. you feed the, when you're the bigger personality, yeah. Yeah. you feed this person and bring them up now, right. which maybe that will happen with this guy, but I uh, I don't know. In in that uh, Eminem, MGK thing, though, yeah, it brought MGK up, but it also still had to switch genres. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. he had to leave rap. Yeah. He had He's to doing leave his rap. pop punk thing now, and, like, yeah. uh, which is fine, Twilight but it's now. like it, uh, like the way I've watched some analysis of that where Eminem does his style and then jumps into MGK style, then back to his style. Like it's it's uh, phenomenal how he just took it all apart. Yeah, and like it, it was, it, but it's fun for like you know that's that's what as someone that's consuming the content makes it so fun to consume is like when there is just a fun celebrity beef that's oh, not yeah. Yeah. litigious or anything like that. Just two guys I doing see what somebody they do. Die, but I want to see yeah. you guys feel. I want to feel as if there's gonna be shots fired at some point. Oh, but yeah. there's no shots fired. Yeah. Just absolutely go at each other's throats. Yeah. So what's his name? Fifty Cent's beefing with someone right now. Uh, okay. He's been, yeah, yeah, he's a Fifty Cent's one he's of the best at beefing. Time. He's great yeah. at, it. and he, he usually he, just he, says he, something, he, and people don't even try to go back. Right. He's, yeah. He's he's very he's all like, precise. <laughs> like if you go all the way back, like he beefed with like fucking Ja Rule yeah. Yeah. and the yeah. game, <laughs> and like all, dude, all you, he bought all the seats. He, in the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> beefed with all those. Then he beefed with Kanye, and then fucking Floyd. Like he's all he's always fucking like he's so good at it. He's so good at it. Yeah. All right, I want to get two questions in okay. on this because this is where we're going to get really important questions. This is where it's going to get a serious podcast, yeah. okay? Are you able to have a serious podcast? Let's do this it. One? I would love to have this one. Uh, in, in the form of wiping your asshole, do you ball your toilet paper or do you fold it? Fold. Fold every time. Yeah, are you are you a ball guy? Are you balling? Have you tried fold? Fold, fold yeah. Fold, fold. You're balling it up? That's insane, dude. That's insane. The fold, the ball it up is chaos on your ass. It's like every little corner is getting more or less shit on it. It's like, no, the fold is the ultimate way. I don't know, man. More conservative. Fold is for adults. The yeah. ball yeah. is for children. <laughs> like it's, I think I'm just, sometimes you got to grow up. I'm yeah, also like, I, I shit uh, immaculately. Like my shits are. Sir, explain, please. I, 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 I have a ball and asshole. I've said this before. I'm in like the top 0.01 percent of shitters. Uh, clean cuts. Uh, clean cut shits, dude. My shits come out like a bar of soap. Like they're fucking firm, but they're sleek. Like sh they just yeah. shoot right out. I gotta wow. get on your diet. Oh, dude. Yeah, what, dude? Diet. Mine is far from that, dude. I. <laughs> My shits are so that's like a huge even. barometer of like where I'm. What currently size at. are we talking though? Are they are you getting a full coil or is it like logging? Uh, I mean, sometimes it depends on the day, right? How yeah. much I was eating that day, but usually we're getting a, a little bit of a coil snake, or you just get one nice solid log. Yeah. But I my like when I wipe, two three wipes max. Like it, and I'm fucking oh, two three two nice. three fold wipe throw down in the water fold wipe or are you saying wipe wipe done? Like I'm saying, like wipe, more, wipe, wipe, done. Like I'm not wiping. Same folds. I'm not saying like the same folding, fold. You're folding. I'll I'll wipe. 
folds in half, wipe, okay. and then the next one goes if it's needed. Okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I was like, that's a lot of toilet paper for somebody that poops clean. You're just like, yeah. all right, fold, fold, wipe, fold, fold, wipe, no, no, no. fold, yeah, fold. That, yeah. That's excessive. No, you fold. You get your like one guy going, and then you wipe, and then you fold that guy in half. Yeah. And then you wipe again, and then usually I'm done wiping. Usually I'm like, oh, there's like. Oh, Almost nothing. But sometimes left. you need that third one just to make sure that it's you got perfectly it all. Yeah. good. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm a big uh, uh, bidet guy. So I got bidets oh. in both of my bathrooms. And, and both like bathroom the, bidet? Yeah, both bathrooms. I, I got to get on uh, that. It's it's now. nice to have that because, and that, but you get spoiled when you go to a hotel or when you're on the road and stuff no like that. Bidet. And you're like, oh, now I got to take a yeah, shower. Yeah, I would imagine. That's why you get I so like, used, gotta take a shower. You get so used yeah. to having such a clean butthole that when it's just a wipe, like, you you, you know it's okay, but it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, that's why I haven't bought a pocket pussy. Yeah. Because, like, Dude, you know, imagine yeah, you bro. find out you've been holding back on the prime and you're like, all right, I can never go back. And then you're like, Do I got to go to my wife and I'm like, you're not my pocket pussy. <laughs> they, they make molds for ladies' parts. Yeah, now, yeah. Where you can get their lips, and I sent it to a few of a few different ladies, and I was like, "Hey, my birthday's in February. Sick. This is what I want." I will spend ninety dollars <laughs> on an Angela White butthole. That's so funny, dude. Just the butthole? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, Man, that's how much great. Does the whole thing cost. I don't know. Probably a pretty penny if the butthole's only 90 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. All right. And the second question that we have is actually a question towards you back to us on our podcast we have where we always have cracking questions from fans. And we ask, or we get the questions, we answer them. Mm-hmm. But whenever we have a guest on, we wanted to throw it at you to ask a question to us. Yeah. Dirty, clean, anywhere in between. What's your cracking question to the goons? Oh, and to the cracking. D Bill yeah. Squire. Cracking question to the goons, the goon squad. Uh, I guess what's uh, this is a question I ask uh, at my shows a lot. What's your porn search category? What's squirting. the category? Squirting, squirting guy. Big naturals hits. Big naturals. That's great. I like I like my big naturals as well, dude. I'm not a huge fan of the fakers. I no, like I like watching the shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta watch the wave. Yeah, Gotta absolutely. Watch the wave. I'm like, damn. Yeah, 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 dude, dude, yeah. Shout out to Angela White, some of the best big naturals in the market. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Vanessa Cage got some nice ones. Yeah. Okay. You just start yeah. running down names. <laughs> Lauren Phillips. Oh, uh, I would probably just go ass. I'm, I'm a big ass. Just guy. ass, yeah, straight big ass. ass guy. Big, big ass. ass. So you're typing in big ass. I would have to. I, I don't ever oh, search though. That's my ass. problem. I would. Yeah. I don't go to categories anymore. I go to porn stars because I got my select. Okay. And then who's I your did. porn star? Um. She's not doing porn anymore, but uh, Carter Cruz. Oh, Carter Cruz. Dude, I just did a podcast with Carter Cruz. Yeah, Carter Cruz is great. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. awesome. Uh, I love the eye roll. The eye roll is what gets me. Yeah, when the fucking the game. Yeah, I don't know up. what it is. Yeah, like, it the is. first time I ever saw that, I was like, I don't know what she did, but that just did a lot selling of it. It's growth selling to it. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of growth to me. <laughs> Peter Jensen. Uh, I don't know Peter Jensen. Knockers. Dude. Yeah. Knockers. Okay, I have to check out Peter Jensen. Uh, and I could just keep going, but I'm not going to say I would. <laughs> I, I got some names. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. What was that uh Kimberly? Kim yeah, it's Kimmy Granger. Yeah, yeah, Kimmy yeah, Granger, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. A friend of mine went on a date with her. He said she's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't that guy. What the fuck happened? Here? <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Um, like milfs mm-hmm. or cougars. Milfs, cougars. You gotta be careful. Careful the way you word it, though. If you start hitting like mature, then it gets a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a little yeah. too old, yeah. and then. <laughs> That's on the then, rise. Then it's though. like it is on the rise, and there's yeah. like, and there's sometimes you'll see one, and you're like. Yeah. Like, 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 I'm not gonna got finish it, but I'm yeah. gonna watch it for a little bit. She like, still got it yeah. together. She's you want to get together. the cookies? Yeah. You want to have grandma's cookies? Well, <laughs> and you got to think some of these chicks, like, um, what's her name? Who's like the? She's like one of the top milf chicks. I can't remember her fucking name. Uh, fuck. Lisa Ann. No, not Lisa Ann. <laughs> or younger, younger than Lisa Ann. More. What she oh, look like? Mia blonde. Brandy Love. Brandy Love. Brandy. Love. Brandy. Brandy. <laughs> Nuts. Man, I've been yeah. jacking out so long. I remember when she was just a regular old young yeah. girl, a, a, a barely 18, and now she's in the middle. Remember, remember Alexis Fox? She was Fox? in the daughter? Oh, I, just, I still fuck with Alexis Fox. I do, Fox. too. Yeah. Yeah. But you could just tell, like, yeah, the, it, like it's been a while journey. since yeah. she started. Yeah. A lot of miles on that Dude, puss. you know, I yeah. met <laughs> Yeah, Alexis Fox is a friend. I've met Alexis. Yeah, she's uh, great. Alexis, yeah she's great. She's, she's she great. She seems like a really cool person. Oh, she's dope as hell. Like podcasts, yeah, 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 no, she, Alexis has been in the game for a while. I actually fucking shouted her out because she's another one Shut who, up. 
she uh, she had a huge jump on Pornhub. She went, she jumped up something like 13 spots in terms of like popularity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alexa's been killing it, dude. Killing the game. And she's I love to bump up a couple more after this. What's that? She's going to bump up a couple more after <laughs> this. Yeah. yeah. Get the goon bump. Get yeah. the goon bump. I also love the personality wise that goes into that as well. You were talking about how comedy and porn also have like a curtain that they're behind and such. But yeah. seeing these people go out on the podcast like Angela White and like Carter Crews doing her DJing stuff, yeah. going yeah. on with Bert and everything. Yeah. Seeing a whole different line. It's like yeah. this is awesome. It's like great. Yeah. Abella Danger, like been number one forever, but Going she's smart school. as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like and no, er, er, nobody, nobody wants to go on there and be like, how smart are you? But then you go in the back scenes, you see their interviews and such. We're like, ask me about something that's not my ass. And yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what to talk to you about. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah, you don't have knowledge like I do. <laughs> but nobody <laughs> would imagine that when you're just watching this and you got to turn it off quick so you don't feel disgusting after. No, I think it's becoming, porn's becoming such a, like a, a, a ne- I don't know if I want to say necessity, but it's just like as a standard part of the culture. Everyone's watching porn. Everyone's mm-hmm. consuming it. Mm-hmm. So it being a platform towards somewhere, something else is just becoming a natural progression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Kind of like and, and with all the did. people doing like OnlyFans and stuff like that, it's, it's getting destigmatized in a yeah. lot of ways too mm-hmm. where people – Especially younger generations, they're like, "Yeah, who cares? Yeah, like it's yeah. not it's not a big deal to see someone naked or to get naked to right. make money and stuff like that." All right, my categories. I'm gonna give you two. These are uh, a little more out there. CFNM, Clets closed male, clothed female, nude they, male. Closed, closed and here's <gasps> here's the genre that I got into. This is one that I haven't really Say watched in a while. Yeah, what? Pardon? Closed, closed female, female, nude, nude male. male. And so yeah. here's what it. I'm this dabbled. is. This is what, <laughs> yeah. I know this one, yeah. This one, uh, there there were these videos uh, back in the day, and it was like the bear dancing bear. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. So, like, these guys, they're strippers, and they go to these parties, and they start dancing around the girls, and then the girls start, like, sucking their dicks and shit while, and, like, going, like, they'll put, like, whipped cream on it. But before those one, there were these other ones that I'm pretty sure were from the UK, and it was the same thing but it was real people oh yeah so it was like someone like and and it was crazy to see because some girls in there would be hot and they start jerking these guys off and like sucking their dick and like pull their tits out but then you'd also see just like a 50 year old mom with a karen haircut just start fucking jacking a guy off and, and sucking <laughs> oh, his dick so and you know he, she's got a husband and stuff okay. and, and, and so like there was just something that was so absurd about that that really fucking got me the reality yeah the reality, yeah, the reality of it was like oh yeah getting your dick sucks cool pretty much no matter what like yeah. that's yeah. that's kind of how you feel about it and then the other one is i like uh Joy videos or JOI where the girl tells you jerk off instructions. Jer- jerk off instructions. Do you yeah. actually do that through the whole time process? No, I kind of pick <laughs> my spots. Have yeah. you ever <laughs> tried to go through like the twenty minute I, and it's like go fast, go slow, go fast? I mean that's edging, right? Like that's kind of. Yeah, I've yeah. done, yeah, yeah, I've, I've done it, but like I don't last to the because it like you hard. get so worked up <laughs> that you're like <laughs> I get mad at I, myself. And then you go, you're that. like, all right, this is an eight minute video. I still got five minutes. I can come back to this video and watch it again, and you know we'll pick up where you know where we left uh, off. Yeah. <laughs> Last time on JOI, I should have probably closed that door. There was a, <laughs> uh, there used to be these one videos that were like the the challenges, mm. and it would like have the pace that you had you to, to go jerk at, off. And yeah, it would, yeah. Like, keep going through different videos. Yeah, and it just kept getting hotter. Yeah, and yeah, never true, true. Yeah. No, yeah. I ended up trying to do that one time, and I got so embarrassed and disappointed at myself because I was only at, I was maybe halfway through, and she's like, you're not done yet. And I was like, I I think I am. I'm so sorry. (laughs) And I'm like, I I just did it, and I was like, this fucking sucks, dude. I walked away mad. Uh, So what's yours? What are your? I love thick MILFs. That's like a go-to for mine. I like like really thick, uh, meaty chicks, pogs. That's a big one for me. Yeah, like a big old juicy And then (laughs) you Jesus. Uh I love how Cody Ray just comes out of nowhere. Like, he's like pretty chill the whole podcast, Mm. and then he just hits us with that, and we're just like, god damn. It's always the one-liner, too. It's like, Cody Ray's kind of creepy, but we love him at the same time. He's like, oh, yeah, the juicy. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, though, yeah, I would say those are the big go-tos for me. 
Um, and then I find I'll just mix in whatever kind of race that is just getting me going. Like if it's Latinas or fucking mm-hmm. black, Asian, whatever. That's Dude, a all. Thick Asian is always a nice yeah. Thing to come by. Crazy like, too. Well, and it's hard yeah. because like, like you'll get you'll get the ones that have like the bolt on tits and stuff like that, and like that's fine. But like when you can find like a real big titty Asian, that's mm. a, yeah. that's like oh, bro, that's a new it, tab. Man. That's like one it. of those tabs you keep up. <laughs> yeah. Dude. yeah, I like it. And then I'll go to the classics every now and again. Like I like to go back and watch like a G. Anna Michaels video or something oh, like that. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. I forgot about it. Yeah, her. I know. You forget about her, dude. Like, Gianna Michaels was, was one of the first for me. Oh, dude, yeah. She's she go back crazy. and, like, watch a Riley Reed college rules video. Something. Yeah, dude, yeah. Like, when she was, like, 18, 19, and she was. Do you remember those videos? I, the I college cannot rules? ever watch oh, one of her videos again after her rap video. <laughs> it soiled me so bad when I. Because every time I see her and she she's doing so many her stuff. Bombs. Dude, oh, every time I'm like, oh, my. My God, and then she's doing. That. I'm like, ah, oh, please God, don't listen to that ever again. And then yeah. it comes up on my Twitter, and I have to watch it the whole the way, way through because you're like, this is it crazy. Makes me so yeah, and I'm like, who thought? Like, yeah, growing porn star potentially number one. Let's put her in the booth and let her talk about how much she loves this. Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. No, that that was that is a that's wild. Like a, that's video. another growing trend though. Is like females talking about. Shit like that, like sexy like red. And oh like, yeah, yeah. That's a whole. I think like, like that is like I don't know. I think Cardi B kind of was like the catalyst for that. Yeah. And there's always been someone in, in that space, like, like Nicki Minaj. Yeah, Nicki, Nicki Minaj, Minaj was Minaj. like she she like walked so that. Cardi B could run. And right. what's the like, chick, yeah. uh, Little Kim? Yeah, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, there's, uh, there's always been someone in that and space. Peaches and shit like that. Yeah, like yeah. That. But, but those were like more obscure. I mean, Little Kim was out there, but uh, it definitely ratcheted up way faster in the past five, six years. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is like super off topic, but whenever I think of Little Kim, I think of this. Um, something I want to be remade. Do you guys remember the game of Def Jam Fight for New York? Yeah. Yeah, Def Jam Fight for New York is it's in my top five favorite games ever. I play a lot of video games. Okay. Um, they need to do a modern version of that with, like, fucking Ice Spice so Drake, sick. fucking yeah. uh, oh Pusha T, fucking, yeah, like, dude, it would be crazy dude dude and you could still have snoop as the villain in it dude like yeah that would be i like that i don't know how you do it without spending a budget that is like absolutely fucking crazy Uh um you would have to get people to come on board for like really like not a lot of money but if you were able to make that game it would be if, if, first of all, the, fir- the the first two, fucking Vendetta and Fight for New York, are incredible games. They're mm. so fucking fun. But it, with a new cast of the biggest stars, like, oh, my God. Even in that game, I There's remember. There's somebody out there that would probably mod that. 100%. Yeah. Like, they could probably mod that. They could make, make it. it. Yeah. Like, if we get EA back on board, yeah. that you need the same sort of wrestling engine that they used because that was part of the fun was, like, these crazy outlandish yeah. moves. Yeah. And you had, like. Dude, I remember in that game you because you had your trainer. Your trainer was Henry Rollins. Like there was yeah, so yeah. many fucking people in that game, dude. Like Busta Rhymes, fucking Method Man, Red Man. Like, duh, dude, it was so sick. What was your what's your favorite game? Oh man, my favorite game of all time is a hard one. Um, if I'm like looking at like my top guys, like definitely Def Jam Fight for New York's one of New York's one of my top guys. Um, I would put Overwatch in there as well. Overwatch is a game that I've gone back to a lot that I love. Um, it got me into competitive shooters a lot more. Uh, Bloodborne's probably on there as well. Bloodborne, like the whole Souls genre, I really like. A okay. personal goal of mine is to platinum all those games. Oh. Uh, and then, fuck, what else would I put on that list? I would probably put God of War Ragnarok on that list uh, as well. I haven't started it that yet, game. But I have it. Oh, dude, it's incredible. Like, they, the way they were able to modernize that series and keep the soul of what the original games were and then keep the the like but then put in this like emotional tether to the characters and mature everything and mature the gameplay style modernize it was unbelievable and still have these like like the first god of war the 2018 one of the remakes um that one has like very good like set piece moments which is what god of war is to me and then the second one has like these crazy like vibrant cutscenes that are like so intense to watch it feels like you're watching one of the best moments in like a uh, like end game or or infinity war on top of that they have these huge set piece boss battles that are amazing so that would be on the list yeah these, that game just got him off you Dude, can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, love that yeah. game we've talked oh. about tits and ass for a while yeah, and he yeah, started yeah, talking yeah. about that and he's like but listen oh my god they're just 
Modern Warfare game? No, oh. I, I have, but I haven't played it. Insane. Yeah, I would. I like you can go back and play the originals, but if you just get on at the 2018, play God of War and then God of War Ragnarok, you might be a little lost story wise. Watch like a YouTube video that catches you up yeah, on all yeah, the yeah. old ones. Um, but those are masterpieces of video games. Mm. Uh, and then, fuck, what else would I, like I put? The Assassin's Creed at all? Uh, I'm not a huge Assassin's Creed guy. Assassin's Creed never really got me. Uh, I'm uh, like I. There's a couple indies like indie style games where like I really like Cuphead. That would be like an honorable Cuphead mention. But maybe like Halo Three. I haven't gone back to Halo Three in forever. But that era of when Halo Three was big and I was in high school, even when people moved on to Call of Duty Four, I stayed on Halo Three. That game took so many hours was from me. Halo Three, the first one that was on 360. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a great game. That game fucking ripped. I had some like. I had some kills saved on my old Xbox Hell 360 yeah, that, that were like cool ass moments. Like I really enjoyed the fuck out of that game. Um, yeah, I would say that's probably like in the realm of what my list looks like of my top five. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I think we're going to get Boot Scoot and Boogie in out of here. Yeah. We've got mm-hmm. some travel time to do. We yeah. ended up coming up to Cleveland to see you. We were, originally, we were going to have you come to us in our small town, Clyde, into come the basement. That's terrifying. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, you didn't because it's colder than shit and it's in the basement. So we would have had to, oh, you had the heat running in there. Yeah. We're like, we got to yeah. try and set it up or something. Yeah, nice like, comfy studio. Yeah, 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 it's a nice yeah. little studio. And thank we're you, awesome. Bill Squire, yeah, for yeah, hosting, setting Bill. it up. Thank you guys for, I'm finally... I'm happy we finally got to yeah, do this. We've yeah. been talking about doing a collab like this for a long time, and, it, been, and it came together. We've been wanting to get on the Bill Squire show, and we haven't come up for it. And yeah. I hit him up for the studio, and I was like, as I sent it, I was like, man, it would have been so nice to have more time to do it. And he's like, on the way, he's like, you want to just do a collab? And I was like, yeah, f- let's yeah, just let's do, do it. that. Yeah. But thank you for coming in here. Yeah, thank man, you guys for man. having me. I appreciate it. This uh, is very fun. As if nobody knows where the fuck you're at, let them plug all the socials and everything. For sure. Like that. Uh, I'm Chaderena on all platforms. That's C H E D U R E N A. Chaderena.com for all ticket and tour dates. A ton of Canadian stuff coming up. So we got uh, Winnipeg, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, Victoria, and then some stuff later in the year. We got Bloomington, Minnesota, uh, Tacoma, Washington, and La Jolla. California uh, in San Diego. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think La Jolla tickets are available yet. Uh, Calgary and Edmonton, we added a second day, a second show on both those. Uh, so yeah, go find all your stuff. Hell yeah, oh, buy those yeah. tickets, guys. Yeah. This dude's fucking hilarious. And if you are in Cleveland already, you're already, already gonna miss this. But you better have fucking been to that damn show and mm-hmm. show out. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, like, yesterday's show was an absolute killing. Oh, absolutely. And then today's even the two shows today are more packed than yesterday. So let's it's gonna be go, great. Yeah, dude, yeah let's go. Awesome. If we didn't have and to travel, where's home, your show that you got coming up? Oh, I was gonna let Cody Ray do it. Do you want to oh. do a Do you want to do a promo right now, Cody oh, Ray? Yeah, dude. do you want to set get it, it up? Oh, Let's shit. get it. January twenty seventh. When's this coming out? Monday. Yes. 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 So this Saturday coming up, January twenty seventh at the Moonshine Comedy Club, mm-hmm. eight o'clock. Doors open at seven. Headlining John Armstrong, featuring Noah mm-hmm. Ryan. I will be your host with the Boogered Up Boys. Your Dang, we'll fucking okay. be in That's there. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Look at that one. And all my stuff at billsquire.com. You got I got tour dates uh mostly in Northeast Ohio area, uh doing some stuff with Chad Daniels out on the road uh later this year. That's all at my website. And yeah. Uh Hell. and real quick, I'll drop it on this one then. Uh February, hold on, let me check the not February, March. Let me check the date. I want to fuck that one up cuz we're I'm going to announce the next show that we have up. That was February. February 17th, AJ Wilkerson is coming to the Moonshine Comedy Club. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. That's awesome. Two shows off rip immediately. Super stoked for that. I'm going to be hosting that one, and my butthole was already tight enough opening for you, so it's already going to be fun. I'm not going to do any ginger jokes. I'm going to try and stay away from that one for this one. (laughs) Yeah. But February 17th, when you guys are listening to this, more than likely we're going to have tickets. I think you should take inspiration from Riley Reed. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but make sure you guys are buying the tickets for all these people all these people's shows and everything. We'll catch you guys next week. Don't do anything that we wouldn't do. do. Peace. Bye. Shut up. <laughs>